Welcome back, my erudite friends, to another edition of Monte Cristo's Power Rankings, the Thinking Fan's Power Rankings. You may be wondering why you are not joining me by a roaring fire in my library. Well, I am still setting up my library after the move, so you'll have to wait until the next edition to be back in our old comfort room. That said, we have a lot to talk about now that we're going to be discussing the end of Stage 3, Week 2. Obviously, a lot of movement has happened in the Overwatch League. We've seen some teams like the LA Valiant and the Houston Outlaws on the up and up. And indeed, we are going to talk about them right now. Coming in at number 10 will be the Los Angeles Valiant. Now, this might be a touch too high, um, but they played a pretty competitive match against the Shanghai Dragons and obviously scored some wins against the Chengdu Hunters and the Guangzhou Charge. Those wins were pretty convincing, but they have a rematch coming up against the Shanghai Dragons and they also have to play the Vancouver Titans this next week. Probably both matches, which they are going to lose uh, because those teams have been a little bit more solid than them lately. But you know what? They've been on a pretty good tear, regardless what happens for the rest of this stage. Their opponents are very difficult, so they might end up actually losing all four of their final matches. However, they have displayed an aptitude running the GOATS composition, and Fact Fiction seems to be slotting into the lineup nicely. So again, maybe going down a little bit, it really depends on whether they can play some of these tough opponents close. If they start getting blown out, they are going to fall down the rankings. At number nine, we have the London Spitfire, still by far the most confusing team in the Overwatch League. One minute, you have London coming out and convincingly destroying the Boston Uprising, which did turn out to be a little bit weaker than expected. But then also, coming back and getting blown out by the NYXL, they had a solid win against the Toronto Defiant. So, you know, I feel like they're still going to be a middle-of-the-pack team unless they can show us something really unique this week when they get their rematch up against the NYXL. This is still a team that could take off at any time, so we can't ever count them out really simply because of the pound-for-pound, player-for-player strength of this roster. As usual, it's a coordination issue, it's a synergy issue uh, that we see for the London Spitfire. They still have a lot of wins, though. I think part of that is because they are in the Atlantic division. So I think we can safely assume that this is going to be a playoff team unless they take a major slide, even though I'm putting them currently outside of the top eight. At number eight, we have the Houston Outlaws. This is going to be their highest ranking on my power rankings of the season, and it may be a little bit preemptive, but we simply can't discount the win that they got against the San Francisco Shock. They also proved that playing NYXL to five maps in the previous week was no fluke, and then they came and just pounded the Boston Uprising into the dirt. As we look at the rest of their schedule, they're going to be playing the Paris Eternal, the Florida Mayhem, the Washington Justice, and the Toronto Defiant four of the worst teams in this league so as it stands right now they are prepped to potentially go six and one uh and meet, reach the stage playoffs i'm not sure even if they win against all of these teams that they're really going to be able to move up in the power rankings right now simply because of the strength of their opponents but they could be a major threat in the playoffs if they continue to get these wins convincingly. And they're starting to claw their way back up into the top 12, which will be necessary to make a run at the play-ins for the overall season playoffs. This could be a massive turnaround stage for Houston, putting themselves back in the season running. And that's really quite exciting. We've seen some really good stuff from them so far as they've experimented with some fun compositions running Widowmaker, Sombra Goats, Doomfist, Farah. They've been all over the place, but it's been working for them. They seems like they've been playing on instinct and sort of that return towards their natural feel has yielded some really good results. Um, I'm really excited about the Houston Outlaws and what they can bring for the rest of the season. They're certainly one of the more fun teams to watch right now. And I think they can continue their run of dominance at least until the end of stage three. Number seven, we have the Soul Dynasty. Seoul is interesting because they haven't really settled on a starting roster. They're From the outside, it's kind of confusing as to which of these rosters they're willing to run. But also, in the last couple of weeks, they put up a 12-0 run against generally bottom-tier teams in Florida and Guangzhou, but also against the Atlanta Reign, a team that's been looking better and better. And then they hit the San Francisco shock. San Francisco was bouncing back after that Houston loss, and I think they were frustrated. They were out for blood. And Seoul just couldn't keep pace with them. 
I'd like to see Soul return to some of the Sombra Goats play that we saw. I'd like to see a little bit more Michelle so you get that flexibility between the Diva and the Sombra play. Unsure if Soul deserves to be this high, considering the quality of the opponents that they've been hitting. Um, but we should have some more information, particularly this coming week. They've only got one match against the Hangzhou Spark. If they can win that, that's probably going to send them up. If they lose, they'll probably still stay hovering around the position that they are right now. Coming in at number six is the Los Angeles Gladiators. Gladiators, another one of those teams that, yes, they've been able to convincingly destroy teams lower in the rankings, like the Dallas Fuel, the Philadelphia Fusion, the Washington Justice, but they struggled against the Vancouver Titans. Yes, they took a map, but some of the other maps they played against Vancouver were really, really hard stomps, especially that last map, Watchpoint Gibraltar, was just a full hold by the Vancouver Titans. So it seemed like once the Titans warmed up, they really had the Gladiators number. I do like the switch that we've seen to, from... Uh, from Sherford to the starting lineup and in at the Brigitte role. Uh, it seems like it's actually brought even more good stuff out of the Gladiators. And the big match the Gladiators have is against the Shanghai Dragons this next week. That is going to be their real proof to see if they can go up in the power rankings. It might be one of, if not the best match uh, of the coming week. So certainly stay tuned for that one and we'll see how both of those teams do. Speaking of the Shanghai Dragons, number five will be the Shanghai Dragons themselves. Uh, Shanghai is a team that I think has really discovered their identity last stage, playing primarily Sombra Goats. Um, and I think, honestly, that their success has shown a lot of other teams that Sombra Goats is pretty powerful on a variety of maps and can be played, I think, in many, many different situations. Um, Shanghai, again, a little bit of a caveat. They did come off this last week of a narrow win against the Atlanta Reign. Um, you know, we've so far, it, we've only seen a couple of matches out of them. So they've, they're pretty heavily weighted towards the back half. They did beat the Valiant as well. Uh, this is going to be kind of a make or break week for them as they rematch the Valiant and then the very next day have to play the Gladiators. They pick up two wins there and they should solidify their place in the rankings. That said, they also play two matches versus Guangzhou uh, to close this stage out and then a game against Philadelphia at the Atlanta homestand. Realistically, Shanghai should win most, if not all, of these matches, with the exception of the Gladiators. Uh, so I think they're pretty much primed to be a stage playoff team again, and that's where we'll get the real information as they stack up against a harder schedule in the stage playoffs. Number four, Hangzhou Spark. It's a team that has come out, and they've really dominated the Philadelphia Fusion last week. We saw one win against the Washington Justice and then a, a very close match, actually, against the Vancouver Titans. And it's really that close match against the Titans that's putting them this far up. I do think that they still have a lot of issues when it comes to control point maps, like uh, not not like uh, like control. <laughs> I know that's confusing, um, but objective based maps where you're moving, such as Assault and Hybrid. Uh, those are those are maps that generally really reward set plays on the attack, and that's where they've struggled a bit. When they're in the moment, when they're in the heat of battle, um, they are very, very good. They can hang, hang in team fights with some of the best teams in the league, but when they have to set up a play on an assault map, they've been pretty bad. They drew against the Washington Justice, looked pretty weak on Paris. So these are the things I think Hangzhou needs to work on. If they can get their assault and under control and even a little bit better play on hybrid, this could be one of, if not the best team in the league. I think that's the missing component that they have right now when it comes to comparing them against the big top three teams that we're seeing. Uh, they're still extremely dangerous. Uh, I think this is something that the coaching staff can fix on the Spark. So as we go into this next week where they play Dallas and Seoul, uh, Dallas is also bad at assault maps, so I assume Hangzhou will be able to win that series. Seoul might be a little bit of a different case. Uh, this is going to be huge for the Hangzhou Spark. They are potentially, if they fix these problems, in the running for the stage championship. So that's really exciting coming from them. Number three, we have the NYXL. They got off to a, a bit of a rocky start. Uh, part of that was I think they underestimated the Houston Outlaws, which I don't think anybody is going to be doing anymore. And the other part is now we see Seb Yolby coming in and playing that Sombra in their Sombra Goats compositions. He was really rusty, looked out of place on that first day, 
But just a couple days later, he looked really good in their victory over the London Spitfire, where NYXL completely dominated them. A little bit of a closer match, 3-1 against the Paris Eternal, but again, Paris is a team that looks like they're on the rise, so that's not going to be a huge knock against them. NYXL confuses me a little bit right now because they were one of the first Sombra Goats teams to heavily play that composition earlier in this season, and they were doing it with Mecco swapping between the Diva and the Sombra, which is exactly what we see most teams doing right now who are running that comp. Uh, in fact, Mecco looked really good on the Sombra, so I'm a bit confused as to why we see Sabiolbi, but it is also working, so I don't know how much I can knock it. Um, We'll see what they do against their in their rematch against London. It's their only match uh, coming up next week. So uh, certainly something that they will be able to heavily prepare for. Uh, they looked like they had London's number last time, and London's going to be the one that really has to show some of their metal as they face off against the XL. As we round out the stage, a match versus Dallas, Florida, and Toronto. So again, I think we can safely expect the NYXL to conclude this stage possibly undefeated at 7-0, as London is their only really scary opponent I think they have remaining. Number two, they may have won the stage two finals, but San Francisco Shock looked really rusty in their first match against the Atlanta Reign. Not sure if they took an extended break. Maybe they dialed down their practice a little bit as a reward from winning stage two. Uh, so they barely eke out that win. And then you also have the upset that they faced at the hands of the Houston Outlaws. Now, some people might say, well, because they lost to Houston and because they played that five-match set against the Atlanta Reign, we should put them a little bit lower. I think they were just slow to start this stage. Um, and now we saw at the end them sort of get mad after losing to Houston and completely blow out the Seoul Dynasty, looking like they had returned to form. My concern is that even though they played well against the Shanghai Dragons running Sombra at the end of last stage and in the stage playoffs, that Houston picked them apart with it. And if other teams get better at playing Sombra, San Francisco Shock may start to have some issues. Um, Choi Hyobin really hasn't shown us much Sombra if they're going to be using him to play the Sombra from the flex tank. Usually it's been Sinatra when they flex over, which can leave them some holes at Zarya. So San Francisco Shock is either going to have to figure out a way to counter the Sombra comps tactically with the compositions that they're already great at playing, which is Standard Goats and Batiste Goats, or they're going to have to figure out a way, I think, to be successful with the Sombra themselves, or find an, a completely different composition that will be able to handle it as more and more teams are likely to try and exploit this weakness that we saw Houston uh, do so successfully. So San Francisco Shock, tentatively still looking good. Uh, Boston shouldn't be much of a challenge next week. Florida shouldn't be much of a challenge. Chengdu shouldn't be much of a challenge the week after that. And then they play London. So still, I would say pretty good odds. They end 6-1, and one, end up in the stage playoffs again. And we know what a threat they can be uh, in clutch situations, in do-or-die situations like the playoffs. Also, the Shock shouldn't be too worried because they're well on their play way to a high seeding at the end of the season, especially because their map differential is enormous from not having lost any maps at all in Stage 2. Uh, they can, I think, afford to take their foot off the, the gas a little bit as the season ends and really start thinking about uh, Stage 4 and the season playoffs. But since the Shock lost, guess what? It's back for the Vancouver Titans, number one. And I say this in spite of the fact that this might be the weakest we have ever seen the Titans look. They dropped a map to Atlanta. They dropped a map to the Gladiators. They really narrowly avoided going to map five and potentially losing to the Hangzhou Spark. And then they looked great against the Dallas Fuel. But they're always, I think, going to look good if they're given the opportunity to run a Reinhardt Goats mirror. Uh, I, that's not where you want to fight them, I think, for the most of the time. Vancouver, when they've attempted to swap out of traditional goats and run the Sombra, Soman Su has been really underwhelming on the Sombra play overall. And that, I think, is the real key. We know they're the best goats team in the league, but as teams start to experiment with varieties on that composition, they have started to show some, weak, show some weakness in their own ability to execute it. Again, it's a tactical issue. You can play into Sombra Goats with, with regular Goats, um, as we've seen them do many times, but I think as teams get better at the Sombra, it becomes increasingly difficult to make that successful. So they're still the best team in the league, but they might have some challenges. 
but probably not up until the stage playoffs, considering that their remaining opponents are going to be a rematch in week four up against the Gladiators, and then we get to see them next week versus the Chengdu Hunters and the LA Valiant, both matches we expect them to win. Outside shot, though, Chengdu in their rematch. Remember, that match went to five maps in their first meeting. So there is a little bit of an outside shot that Chengdu might actually be able to take it this time. They are an unpredictable team in that they can create upsets at times. Um, so we can't really count Chengdu out. They're always going to be dangerous because you don't know what to expect much of the time. That said, I think the real test, obviously, is going to be coming into the playoffs. It's unfortunate that we don't get to see a lot of what I think are going to be the really hot teams coming into the playoffs play against each other until we get there, but also makes it exciting for the conclusion of the stage. Thank you very much for joining me for my latest edition of Power Rankings. I'll probably see you guys in a couple of weeks.